Thank you, Adrian. Good evening, everyone. Monday night is game night on Talk Sport. But a bit like the Boomtown Rats, Arsenal don't like Mondays. The last time they won away on a Monday night, Freddie Jumberg was in charge of the team. Last season, every other day was a happy day on their travels. But since December 2019, Arsenal have lost all four of their Premier League away games on the first day of the week, including here 18 months ago. And Palace are no mucks. Only Brighton had more shots on the opening day than Roy Hodgson's Crystal Palace, who have played with the handbrake off since the former England manager was reinstated. In fact, since Hodgson's first game back in charge, the Eagles have won more points than the Gunners. And Nottingham Forest gave Arsenal a scare last week. It's not guaranteed that Monday night is going to be a good night for Arsenal. Let's go through the two teams, starting with the home side, Crystal Palace, Sam Johnston, the England goalkeeper, started the last 10 Premier League games either side of the summer. He retains his place in goal in front of a back four that includes Joel Ward, who is closing in on the Palace Premier League appearance record. It's his 280th appearance tonight, alongside Joachim Jim Anderson, Mark Gurhey, and Tyreek Mitchell in the back four, which is protected by Jefferson Lerma, who had a good debut, and Czech Decore, who has been linked with a move to Liverpool during the course of uh, the last week. Eberichi Eze plays behind Schlupp, Ayu, and Odson Edouard, who scored the winner against Sheffield United eight days ago. For Arsenal, Aaron Ramsdale is their goalkeeper. Thomas Partey will combine duties as a right-back and a central midfielder. Ben White, William Saliba and Takahiro Tomiyasu make up the defence. Rice, Erdegaard, Havertz are in midfield. Saka will stay wide on the right. Martinelli wide on the left. And it's Eddie Enketia through the middle. Nine goals in 18 starts last season. He got one from one so far this campaign. Palace in their blue and red half jerseys, blue shorts and blue socks will attack the White Horse Lane end of Selhurst Park in this first half. And Arsenal in bright yellow with black wavy lines running through them and deep blue trim will shoot from left to right in this first half of the game. Before we start, there will be a tribute to a number of Crystal Palace players and officials who passed away during the summer break. who was the Millwall chairman and Trevor Francis who was the manager at this club honoured by the Crystal Palace and the Arsenal fans actually here inside this stadium tonight Friday night we go to Kenilworth Road for the first time this season Saturday lunchtime it's two new managers Iriola at Bournemouth and Foster Coffer at Spurs there's a huge hunt Sunday session on the way and when all is said and done Ali McCoyston and Andy Townsend will pick through everything at breakfast time on Mondays and Tuesday mornings Alan's back Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and Jeff Selling joins us in December but tonight we're at the Palace with the best away team in the land last season can the Gunners make it two from two they get us off and underway Danny Murphy knows exactly how Roy Hodgson works he was his captain at Fulham what traps will he lay for Arsenal tonight under the lights at Selhurst Park well I thought I knew how it worked till I saw this Palace team played here yes, at the end of last season that wasn't one of Roy's teams it was a team full of confidence and attacking creativity 
Well, credit to Roy, actually. Um, joking aside, he um, he steadied the ship and then gave them the the freedom to go and express themselves and enjoy themselves. Got Eze back in the team, did a wonderful job, hence the fact he's still here. More of the same from the Palace fans, I think that's what they want to see. Well, they certainly are making uh, it a colourful night with red and blue smoked pyrotechnics billowing up into the sky from the Homestale Road and the way to our right where the ultras sit. There's a huge amount of smoke coming onto the pitch from that area of the supporter base right behind the goal that Sam Johnson is defending. Aaron Ramsdale has the ball away to our left-hand side. And Arsenal looking to build out from the back. Palace enjoyed 68% possession last week against Sheffield United, had 24 shots, scored twice, totally uh, bossed the game, scored once and totally bossed the game at Bramall Lane. Now we'll expect a different match tonight. Eddie Nketiah comes forward, heads the ball down to Erdogan, picked up by Kai Havertz, who tricks his way to the edge of the box. There's lots of space for Martinelli, left side of the box, jinx on in his right foot, takes a long time to get his shot away. It pops up to Havertz and then comes back out to Saka. Saka turns and twists and heads towards goal, but he can't pull enough power behind it and it's blocked by Anderson and out towards the far side. And Martinelli there had a great chance to open the scoring down. He, he should have hit it first time. Yeah, well, maybe on his, or took it on his left. He had all the, all the space to go on his left. Great play from Havertz. Good feet and then found the pass. Sloppy start from Palace. It's a great chance for Arsenal, and uh, we only played two and a bit minutes on Talk Sport. The ball's on the halfway line with William Saliba. Declan Rice just dropping into the back four at this moment in time. We did expect that Partey would go into a right back position, but it was Rice who moved into the back four and then into midfield. Slightly different from last week. We'll see how that materialises. Ben White out towards this near side where now Thomas Partey is waiting for it. It will be a fluid formation, I think, from Arsenal throughout the course of the evening with players filling in. They've got such versatile players that can play in a variety of positions. Martinelli has it wide on the left. Midway inside opposition territory he travels from the touchline centrally and then lays it off back into the heart of the defense and William Saliba the Frenchman who had such a superb season a first full season in Arsenal colors Saka who's been superb for a while now takes the ball in on the right side cuts in on his left foot scored that terrific goal last week lays it off to White then goes on a dart down the touchline he's blocked off by Mitchell before White can find him but it's been Arsenal who have dominated the ball in the early exchanges I think we anticipated yeah really confident start from Arsenal popping the ball about probing moving Palace from side to side they have the ball again with uh, Partey finding Saka down in the right wing position he accelerates towards the byline then produces a cross into the box headed behind and away by Ayu who's coming back to cover and Ketia who's wearing that number 14 shirt made famous by Thierry Henry and he goes out for the first corner of the game in front of the Homestale Road fans away to our right hand side who is so noisy they make such a, a din it's intimidating for travelling uh, supporters and players first corner to come in from Saka on this near side a lot of the corners last week that they took went into the near post be interesting to see where this one goes from Bukayo Saka the first of the game so far four and a half minutes gone it's in towards that near post again and it's headed away um, by Olsen Edouard and out towards this near touchline where Erdogan can take it then White will try to send it back to Saka he successfully does that Partey ships it on but gives it away and then Decore sends it long Ramsdale's starting position is very high and good and as a result of that he can intercept the long ball forward it's a fine balance for Palace of when to commit and engage try and win the ball back and when to keep your position keep your shape Saka again, coming in from the right-hand side, looking to try and pop it centrally into Erdegaard. It's cut out by uh, Jeffrey Schlupp on this near side. Saka wrestling with Tyreek Mitchell. The ball almost went out of play, but he just about kept it in. Our referee today is David Coop, by the way, our VAR, Jared Gillett. And the ball pops out of play towards the touchline on this near side. A little bit of advice to all the Arsenal players. Keep away from that angry man in the technical yeah. area. Because yeah, you he, don't want to mess with Roy. He's well armed that Roy, as uh, was found out by uh, Max Lowe last week at Sheffield United. It was fascinating last week, actually, in the first half of the game against Forest. Arsenal had 82% possession in the game. They've had 92% in the opening five minutes here. This is Saliba, just short of the halfway line. Back up towards uh, Partey. Partey 
out towards the near side and it comes off Saka and uh, Roy Hodgson allows that to run behind him he's out for a throw the thing is what Roy, Roy always imparts the message that sometimes when, when the other team's having good possession don't worry about it don't get panicked don't fall out fly out of position and try and win the ball back when you're feeling impatient it's one of his consistent messages but you've got to you have to balance that out with actually knowing when to come out because you, you can drop off we saw that a couple of times the first five minutes Palace dropping off filling in the holes but not really engaging and making it too easy for Arsenal so they've got to find that balance which hopefully they will do more as the game goes on from Palace perspective fascinating there as the ball went back to Saliba from Kai Havertz who tricked his way through a couple of players then gave it back to Saliba Declan Rice moved into a sort of left centre half position then told Thomas Partey to come more centrally to receive the ball he was prodding and pushing his teammates and he's quite vocal in the middle there is Declan Rice he's not the captain that job is for Erdegaard but he's definitely a leader I yeah. think the ball is out on the left hand side with Martinelli he then swirls it back to Saliba they keep the ball so well here at Arsenal we play just over six and a half minutes it's still goalless on talk sport it's up high towards the edge of the area and Ketia trying to profit from a, a little bit of a, a fumble by Anderson but apparently he was fouled by Nketiah and it's going to be a free kick on the edge of the penalty area still goalless Danny yeah if you had if you had a um a computer in front of you with the average positions on I mean Partey would be a central midfielder at this point and it would be a back three he's falling back into right back now the thing for that when Palace do win it back there is going to be space down the sides if they've got the runners the uh, players average position graphic that I can give you isn't available until the 25th minute I'm afraid so you'll have to wait a little bit longer for that <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to Crystal Palace, Neil Arsenal, Neil on Talk Sport. With now, don't forget with now, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Crystal Palace versus Arsenal Live right now for 11.99. No contract search now. Sport. Schluck under pressure from Havertz. Referee says Brilliant. play on because he's got it through to Decore, despite the fact that could have been a foul. The advantage is played and Palace steam forward with Ayu down the right-hand side, trying to trick the ball into the near post. It's stopped by Saliba as it slides through the six-yard box and it's put out a play on the far side in front of the Arthur Wakes down and away for a throw into Crystal Palace. Good work. Wow, it all started from fantastic footwork in the middle of the pitch from Schluck. Skipped around a couple, won the tackle, got it out to this right-hand side, and Ayu says, I'm going to have a go at you, I'll come at you, Tommy Ashley, see what you've got. Gets the cross in, brilliant positional play from Saliba to stop the cross. Talk Sport, live at uh, Selhurst Park on this Monday night, beautiful Monday night as well, it's been really hot today and nice in London, sun has been shining, it's blue sky everywhere, and... Uh, it's certainly been a uh, sunny period in the history of Arsenal Football Club so close to winning the title last season great touch taken down by Lerma he drags it upfield and plays it wide Schlupp onto Mitchell he couldn't quite control Partey getting back and winning it for Arsenal in the right fullback position and then Saka is robbed by Mitchell and it uh, by uh, Schlupp and it goes out for a throw in on this near side and it remains goalless to remember that it's still very early in the season Arsenal played uh, most of the game you would say or at least 65 minutes of the game very well against Nottingham Forest but then ran out of steam a little bit did get caught from a corner where Partey had been dragged up the field and was acting like a midfield player as he is at this moment in time but then found himself exposed when Forest very rapidly broke on them that was in the second half and they had a very nervous last 10-15 minutes or so the other problem you've got, Sam, as well, is so many times I saw Arsenal last year with uh, Ben White overlapping Saka and getting in great positions when they had little, you know, 2v1s down the right-hand side. But if he's playing in, and parties ahead of him, he's not going to be able to fly forward from that more central position. But it's something that happened in the Community Shield, and you and I were talking about that beforehand. Maybe against the best teams, they don't necessarily do that. But, you know, he is very good at getting on the outside of Saka. And actually, sometimes he just makes a run which allows Saka to drift in field yeah. because there's a bit more space. It's nil-nil. Saka has the ball for Arsenal in those yellow shirts, bright yellow shirts. One of those kits that many people think is quite garish, but it's awful. I think I think it's going to be a cult kit that in the future. Uh, you're not sure. Here is Saka down the right-hand side. Tucks it in field, and Kessia trying to get hold of it. Havertz is there as well, breaking into the box, but it's away 
by De Kure. Comes back via Erdegaard to the right wing position, looking for it is Saka. Saka now in field towards Erdegaard once more. He travels down the right side, needs some support. Saka drops off to provide it on the corner of the box, and they're a little bit hemmed towards the touchline on this near side, uh, Arsenal. But they're trying to make room now, and Saka has just made some, and then curls the ball towards the far corner of the goal as he cuts in on his left foot, but he didn't have any power in that shot, and it just sort of was a bit betwixt the two. It wasn't really a shot, it no. wasn't really a cross, and it ended up coming into the arms of Sam Johnson, the goalkeeper. What is evident, though, is Saka's getting a lot of the ball, and it's going to be a long, long evening for Mitchell if they keep feeding him the ball the way they are. He's got such explosion, hasn't he, either way, when he's got that ball at his feet. Where do you show him? You need help, you need someone doubling up with you, talking to you as you come across. He's that good, Saka, you can't do it on your own. Crystal Palace have been in good form since Hodgson came back. Six wins from 11 games. And they have scored on average just under two goals a game. Which is not what Palace were used to the last time he was in charge. You know, if we look at the table from the time that he walked in the door to now, they'd be in the top six. Unbelievable. But they still don't score as many goals as the other teams around no. them. And that is something that I think they need to rectify. There's no Jean-Philippe Mateta in the squad tonight. Rumours that he might be moving on. Here is Anderson, back to uh, Gerhi, who guides it back to his goalkeeper, Sam Johnston, who uh, got given the number one this season. He was signed by Vieira from West Brom last campaign. Took him a bit of time to get hold of the number one position from Vicente Guaita, who uh, still is not very happy about it, which is why Remy Matthews is on the bench tonight. I think the two centre-halves from Palace give them a, a real positive in terms of the football they play now you talk about the possession last week and the the way they finished the season a lot of moves start from those back two they're very comfortable on the ball aren't they they want to play out more they want to get on the on the ball and dictate play they're not they're not the type who want to lump it forward and just defend that's not them at all good pairing it, it will be fascinating to see how anderson uses his telescopic uh, yeah. right leg he's his laser-guided precision diagonal passes because last year he was very much sort of angling lows to uh, Wilfred Zaha who obviously has moved on now um, but it'd be interesting to see wh whether they still sort of employ that tactic every now and again Eze has it in the centre of the field does well to sh shepherd the ball out towards the left-hand side Schlupp takes over and then nudges it down into the left-wing position where De Jefferson Lerma has peeled out there he tries to find Schlupp with a return ball which was followed by Thomas Parsi who goes back into the right full-back position and Arsenal look to play triangles to get themselves out of a tight spot but the press is on from Palace and it's not easy to get out and actually Gerhi's come across and won it but then given it away and now it's broken down on the halfway line and they're speeding upfield Arsenal Saka has released Enketia who's running to the right angle of the penalty area he's got two over on the far side if he can squeeze the ball out there he said he goes infield to Saka who tries to steer it centrally it's blocked by Gerhi who got back to cover and blocked the effort it goes behind and away for a corner well, he recovered well, Gerhi. It was his mistake in the first place. A good break from Arsenal. That man Saka involved again. There was an overload on the back post. Down that right side, Nketiah. If he could have got his head up, the pass was on. Martinelli was the uh, spare man because Joel Ward had had to narrow up. It's a couple of times, actually, that Martinelli's been the spare man yeah. on that far side. Here's the corner to be taken by Saka. Are they going to go near post again here? It seems to be the tactic. Right hand in the air from Saka. He whips it in, left-footed. This is a little bit deeper towards the far post. And Johnson comes travelling out, takes a really good catch. High in the air. Too loopy, wasn't it? Too and loopy. it was an easy one for him to grab from the sky. It's a bit safe, that. Don't like those corners, the loopy safe ones. They encourage good goalkeepers to come and catch it. Got to try and get a bit more pace on it. You mentioned it um, earlier about the increase in uh, possession and chances since his return. Crystal Palace have averaged 15.7 shots per game compared to under 10 in his first yeah. uh, spell. And uh, under Patrick Vieira where what they were really struggling out. for shots. Long ball forward down the left-hand side to get them higher up the pitch, Crystal Palace. He's picked off by Edson uh, Odward, who turns the ball back into the middle of the park now and finds Lerma on to the Cure, and then further wide it goes. Now it's picked up by Joel Ward. On to Ayu. Ayu trying to trick his way past Tommy Yasu. Produced across into the centre. Punched away by Ramsdale. And as they couldn't get hold of it on the edge of the penalty area, Erdegaard reacted first. And then Havertz chips it into the left channel. Ooh. And 
speeding forward was Martinelli, but Anderson had the pace to get there ahead of him and nudged it back to the goalkeeper and to relative safety. I think it would have been a free kick on Anderson. Anyway. Well, it was a it was a breakaway, wasn't it, from Arsenal? And looking from where we are, I thought Martinelli was going to show Anderson a clean pair of heels, but Anderson quick, quicker than I thought. Just before that, down the other end, Ayu beating uh, Tommy Asu again. It's a concern. I'm not sure he's comfortable in that left back position, Tommy Asu. He's played right back, hasn't he? He's played centre back, and now he's playing left back. He's yeah. played left centre half for Japan. But Twice he's flown past him there, Jordan Ayu. Uh, here is Edouard down the left hand side, getting into the box. He's got on the outside of uh, White, then on the inside, then tried to feather the ball forward. It took a little deflection. There was a sh short play for handball. But it looks like White actually is grabbing something else that he thinks the ball hit. And won it back high up inside opposition territory. Eze now has it right, but it's shot. And this one was on target. He had eight shots against Sheffield United and not one of them hit the target. This one did. Winning the ball inside Arsenal's half. They turn it over Crystal Palace. Eze gets himself into a shooting position. He tests Ramsdale, goes to his right and clutches it. But Arsenal not having it all their own way now, Danny. Well, Edward um, got in on that inside left position down down the side of Ben White because Thomas Partey isn't there. There's a massive space there, and he's one on one inside the box. He sits him down, and then he just mistouches it. Edward should have done better. He should have got a shot. It was a good chance that was for for Palace. Yeah, that Partey growing into space. the game now. Certainly an area that they can exploit, Crystal Palace, and I think they've realised that. You would expect Roy Hodgson and Ray Lewington and Paddy McCarthy to have done their due diligence, as all football clubs do, to find the weaknesses, the chinks in the armour of the team that went so close to winning the title last season. Arsenal do have a great record in London derbies. They did last season. They were the first London club ever in top-flight history to post double figures for derby wins in a campaign. Crystal Palace's derby days usually ended in defeat. They have won just four of their last 30 all-London clashes. But this has been a bright start from both. Martinelli's had a good chance for Arsenal. Edouard and Eze have had efforts for Crystal Palace. But after 18 minutes, it's Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal nil on TalkSport. See, I'm not sure on the benefit of having Partey in there, to be honest. Can you understand why he's trying to do it and is it just not working or can um, you not understand why I, he's I don't do really it? understand why they're doing it in this particular game because they don't they should be dominating possession and on top of them so you want width you need to stretch Roy's teams Palace's teams they're, they're generally very they've got numbers in the middle you need to get out wide make some 2v1s and then White isn't going to get out here as much coming from a central a centre back position Tommy Asu trying to get down the left hand side he runs into Joel Ward he slides in puts the ball out and it's away for a corner on the other side this time third corner of the fourth corner of the game for the away side who uh, scored the most goals from crosses and joint most goals from corners last season in the Premier League Arsenal This one going to be taken by Gabriel Marcelli, who's just getting uh, acquainted, let's say, with some of the Selhurst Park faithful over on the far side in the corner of the Arthur Waite and the Holmesdale Road end. Balls it's funny, it's funny. You know you see these different hand signals the players put off. I used to say to the lads, when I took corner, oh, I'll tell you after this corner. Here is the corner right-footed. It's swung in towards the near post again. It's headed away and behind. And Declan Rice felt he was going to get something on that, then didn't. Yeah, I'd, Mark Gerhie got in front of him. I would generally, for the big lads, I'd always try and, obviously from out being out swinger on the right, in swinger from the left, I would always try and hit, hit it with pace somewhere in between the six yard and the penalty spot, and they'd know that, but I'd stick my hand up anywhere just to let the opposition think I was doing something different. A uh, ball in towards the near post again, and it's headed away once more by Jefferson Lerma, and it goes out to the far side, back in by Martinelli. This is a deeper one. Gerhie heads it away from the edge of the six yard box, back in by Rice, who rises on the edge of the 18 yard box. And heads it down, but it's off target. And Johnson scurries to his right, picks it up in his purple T-shirt, and then will distribute to Mark Gurhi just left of the penalty area. Nil-nil the score. So he's just trying to mess with their minds. Those signals don't actually mean anything. I think they do with some players, but if you think players can put on a sixpence where the ball goes each time, you're just trying to whip a good ball in there with pace. Here on the right-hand side, Ayu maybe trying to do just that. Moves down the right of the Palace attack, then turns it back to Eze, who just drifts from the centre area to the right side, back to halfway, and Anderson, the big Danish 
central defender. Palace have won just one of the 12 games that he Play. hasn't started this last year or so. And it's worked out wide from Eze to Ayu towards the edge of the penalty area. He chops back in and looks for someone to nudge it to. Anderson eventually is the recipient. But it goes out wide to Ward who crosses the ball into the box too heavily. Goes over everyone's head and then Saka scurries into a right back position and hits it to halfway. Palace will rebuild again. They'll come forward down the left with Jefferson Lerma. 20 minutes gone on Talk Sport. And it's Crystal Palace nil. Arsenal nil. Dekure up to Edouard, holds it up well, brings Eze into play, body swerves away from Havertz and then tries to nudge it through to Schnupp, it comes back out to Decore, who shoots from Gallant! Wasn't too far away that from Decore, he was 22 yards from goal, it fell on his right foot and he just went to hit it as powerfully as he could, it landed left of the goal and actually I think it was some way wide in the end and was never really troubling Aaron Ramsdale, no. but... Enough, look good. Yeah, it was the angle we were at, but it was good play from Eze, getting on the ball more now, probing, getting more comfortable and confident in possession. I like the shape of Palace, actually. They've got really two holding solid players there, protecting the two centre-halves, Lerma and Decore, trying to pick up Havertz and Odegaard, and then Eze's trying to do a job on Declan Rice. They know, so they know what they're trying to do, and they've grown into this game now. Talk Sport live at... Selhurst Park with Martinelli in possession over on the far side. He nudges it towards his left-hand side. It's picked up on the uh, far touchline by Havertz and then infilled by Tomiyasu. As it goes to Partey and then back infield to Saliba who's on the cusp of the centre circle inside opposition territory. And then Erdegaard who hasn't really got into the game and actually I thought last week made a couple of odd decisions when he was on the ball. Rice has been felled by Edouard and uh, it's out towards the far side again with Saliba well, I'll tell you something Sam in Roy's teams you very rarely see a team that will keep picking up the ball in the tent in the in the in the pockets because he normally will work very hard in the week with the two central midfielders or one central midfielder on making sure those players get picked up it's something we did very very well when, when we were when we were at Fulham under Roy ball out towards the far side and uh, Arsenal still in possession coming forward and it's Martinelli who travels laterally from the touchline on, on the opposite side of the pitch to where we are in the main stand the main stand that will eventually be demolished uh, over towards the far side Tomiyasu, Martinelli then back to Declan Rice Rice then out towards the near touchline and White, White, patient football this from Arsenal keeping hold of the ball, working Palace from side to side, trying to wait for a gap to emerge, a run to be made and an opportunity to present itself Erdegaard swirls it to the left it's Martinelli in the left wing position now Tomiyasu, back to the left and Havertz, Havertz got a bit of space to get the ball in field, he goes safe to Martinelli instead, who's chased out towards the far touchline by Decore it, Sam. it can't keep going wide and spaced across it there, no pressure on the ball space now, down the left for Martinelli who gets into the penalty area, Erdegaard pulls off to the edge of the box, decides to go infield and then decides to hold on to it again for a little bit too long, he's got help from Havertz and then wider still is Tomiyasu and again they just don't get the ball into the penalty area and instead they go to try and knit some play together once again, Tomiyasu to Saka who's drifted into the centre from the edge of the box then just not been able to get beyond this stubborn Palace defence and it's cleared away to half. Well they've got themselves in positions to cross, they're just reluctant to do so because they don't have too many people in there who are going to edit in but you've still got to put it in even if you whip it in low and you let the likes of Enketi and Saka try and get on the end of it and Havertz can head it to be fair to him Ball out towards the far side, taken down by Martinelli once again. He travels towards the edge of the penalty area, he cuts infield. It's blocked by uh, Ayu, but comes through to oh, Tommy Asu stepped on the ball. And now it's been picked up by Ayu, who's running at the defence, and he fancies his chances to run at Declan Rice and Saliba. He holds it up really well, and as a result of that, gives his team an opportunity to get up the pitch and take the pressure off the defence, which had been... He did. ...camped on the edge of the penalty area. He did, but it was an option. There was a runner who had uh, seen him, tried to play him in. There's a big open space, but... Sometimes you need a breather, you make that choice. 
Currently Palace nil, Arsenal nil, and for the latest odds you can head to Labyrinth, where right now you can back Crystal Palace to win the game at 7 to 2, Arsenal Great to win play. at 11 to 10 on, and you can back the draw at 2 to 1. It's all thanks to Labyrinth 18 plus BigGambleAware.org. Here's Joel Ward scampering forward for Crystal Palace. Into the right wing position. The cross comes in from IU, and it's an easy catch by Aaron Ramsdale. Commanding take by him. Worst cross out of three, but again a good breakaway. Started from Gerhi's pass. His pass has been uh, brilliant this evening. Both feet. Like him a lot. Remember when we're done a little bit later on, you'll be able to have your say on the sports bar 03717223344. And Premier League All Access is now available. The podcast is available on YouTube. If you want to Google it, it's on the Talksport channel. Premier League All Access. Perry Groves, Alex Crook, and I just dissecting the weekend stats, debates, numbers predictions, some interesting takes on Everton and Manchester United in that. Ball into the box on the right hand side, sent centrally by Bakayo Saka, headed away by the tall slender figure of Anderson, it goes back out wide to Martinelli and then it's into Declan Rice Rice into Nketia, Nketia trying to turn, he runs to the edge of the area, drinks past two players, gets to the byline, he's brought down by Ward, he wants a penalty the referee doesn't even flinch and the ball is cleared by Ward upfield towards Jordan Ayew and uh, Crystal Palace have possession once again, there might have been a collision there involving Ayew with uh, the uh, I think it's Kai Havertz as he's gone down. That's a yellow card. 25 minutes in. First one, isn't it? First one, which I'm quite surprised about, actually, which is why I saw one of Is that the first one we've had today? It is. It won't be the... Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll probably jinx it now, but it won't be the last. Oh, my God. What are you saying? Uh, it's just beyond belief, some of the yellows that they're getting, they're given. Explain to me why you're unhappy, so that the listeners well, at home can't see Well, he's won the, he's won the ball, and he, his foot's there, and he's tripped over his foot. He's not deliberate, I mean, we're having a debate about it now, but this is the uh, Enketia run, great bit of skill, not a penalty. He's gone past Joe Ward, great bit of skill. I think he's tripped over his own foot, even. <laughs> Nice positive run from Nketiah though, that's what he wants to do. When you're not getting the ball, go and find it, hunt it down and get make things happen. But the referee's given a free kick, which fair enough, he saw it coming together and he did trip over his spot, but it was no um, it was never a yellow card. I mean you're gonna have you can have 10, 15 yellow cards a match, we're given for that. Well, we've had, uh, on average, around about six, I think, over the course of the Premier League. I'm all for weekend. yellow cards, for petulance, bad behaviour, and all those things. Wait time, wasting, not a problem. Let, let's not let's not go stupid. Erdegaard to take it over on the far side. So this is 20 yards from the edge of the penalty area. They went a little bit earlier there at uh, Arsenal. They're going to reset. Uh, is that time wasting? Uh, the ball in by Erdegaard in towards the near post. It's flicked on by Partey. There was a collision inside the box. Havertz went down. The referee said, come on, just get on with it. Elise is ours. Elise, Elise is ours. Um, something about Chelsea and Elise Zhao sing the Homestyle Road stand away to our right hand side I think they're pretty pleased that they retained him we haven't seen him tonight because he's got a hamstring injury yeah big plus for everyone big plus for everyone it's going to be interesting now Havertz and Odegaard getting this game because what you're going to find and this is something that have worked on definitely in the last week is Decore and Lerma are following them back and when Arsenal are building up those two will drop as close to the centre half they don't care how deep they go so how are they going to find that space? They're going to have to find a different way to break this Palace team down Arsenal, probably down the wing, wings. That's a conundrum that they're going to have to solve, and then Ketia might be able to do that. He's turned past the Palace defence, he's gone into the area, he's shifted oh. the ball towards the far corner, he's hit the post. It's brilliant play from Eddie Nketiah. The ball won back high up by Bukayo Saka, in towards the edge of the area the ball fell, and diagonally running from the right side into the centre was Nketiah, who showed brilliant strength to hold off the challenge of Anderson, and then he caressed the ball to the far corner, and he hit the foot of the post. Brilliant turn, sharp Nketiah, so sharp. Really good play, desperately unlucky. It was bad play from Schlupp, wasn't it? Give the ball away in your defensive third, you are in trouble against this Arsenal side. But the sharpness and the speed of turn from Nketia. Honestly, I mean, when he starts, he usually scores 28 goals in 58 starts. That is a terrific. I record. don't understand why so many Arsenal fans keep talking about needing another strike. 
he just loves goals. I think how many Premier League teams would love him in the side. <laughs> I think Arsenal quite happy. I mean, the, behind the scenes, no, but, 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 he's happy. number two, isn't he? Really, Jesus fit is going to play. He is. He hasn't done a bad job when uh, Jesus has uh, been out. He's of done the team. a brilliant job been, more often than not, by the way. I really like Inketi. I'm a big, big fan. You do well. You do well bringing someone in who's better than him. I tell you that much. You'd have to spend an absolute fortune. Well, he's in the team at this moment in time, Eddie Inketia. He's uh, probably, uh, as you say, getting his chance because of the injury to Jesus. But he did say, actually, at the beginning of the season, I'm not here to fill in for anyone, mate. He believes in himself. Yeah, I'm sure he should. Uh, here is uh, Declan Rice nudging the ball back to Saliba. He sends it to Aaron Ramsdale. Ramsdale under pressure from Watson Edwards. Kicks it long and high up the field, looking towards uh, the area that Saka would occupy. Uh, he puts pressure on uh, Mitchell. He does brilliantly, Saka. Absolutely brilliantly. Not only did he win the ball, he kept it in. He then fought with Mitchell, so Mitchell had to commit the foul. He's won that foul, that free kick for Arsenal, and he's up the pitch, and Arsenal have any pressure that they were under a moment yeah. ago gone strength isn't it strength technique just got to be simple there Mitch as soon as you want it back pop it off Gay was on Danny Murphy who uh, played in the Premier League you know the first time I played here Sam when did you play here tell me were you in crew colours I had I was and I had Vinnie Jones grab me round the throat were you playing Give Wimbledon it. yeah FA Cup replay. I used to do the uh, the in-house commentary for Wimbledon when they played at Selhurst Park. Would you believe that was back in the 90s? Yeah, it was the 90s, right? <laughs> and they will have done the game, mate. Um, ball cleared away by Mitchell up towards the uh, halfway line. It's headed away by Saliba and out towards this near side. Well, I was only about 17. 18, so was I. Were <laughs> you the same age? We're not the same age. Oh, well, roughly, I think. Are yeah. we? Yeah, what year were you born? Oh, no, you look much better than me now. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> oh dear, I'm using the wrong moisturiser. <laughs> I could be some of mine, it's special. I've got it off Instagram. It's got a, has it got a tanner in, a bronzer? <laughs> Of course it has. I can tell, yeah. Uh, actually, I've just come back from Greece, I love you now. Oh, OK. What, the musical? <laughs> <laughs> Here's uh, Declan Rice. Over towards the far side. Uh, and then back to Saliba. Then into Martinelli, who is a little bit like Greece Lightning. He clips the ball out towards the right side. Saka brings it down. He takes the ball towards the edge of the penalty area. And then plays it wide to Erdogan with an offside position. That was a bit brainless for him. Well, it's, uh, it's Odegaard. Odegaard's fault, not Saka's, because Odegaard doesn't need to come out, uh, doesn't need to be offside, and doesn't need to be that wide. Stay in the danger is play your little one-twos, bounce it for Saka, be a wall. If you leave, the problem is sometimes, when Saka is so good, you don't actually need to come over to him. He, if you leave him one-on-one, -on -one, he loves it. He was, he was bringing another player over there, Odegaard, they got a bit mixed up. Sometimes just give him, just give him the space to work his magic. Uh, there's uh, an interesting uh, sort of uh, brains trust on the front row of the director's box tonight. Gareth Southgate, former Crystal Palace player and England manager, is watching from on high. He's sitting next to Steve Parrish. Mark Bright is there as well. And so is Talk Sports phone-in host Alan Pardew is there. He was with uh, Majestic yesterday on the phone-in. He's around every single Sunday from 6.30 to take your calls. And it was good fun yesterday. Um, he's sort of uh, majestic is very animated and very excited and Alan tries to bring a bit of the calm actually it's a good duo every Sunday night 6.30 I'll have a listen have a listen I'm surprised you uh, no I haven't heard that one actually you yeah, haven't it's just only been out for a couple of weeks I'll tell you what at half time I'll show you how to use the app you can listen back on your way I've got time. the app oh good yeah I'm, um, I'm up to date with that yeah and uh, the new updated app by the way has got video footage on it as well now so that's uh, a new invention that we've got as uh, Declan Rice is just adjusting his contact lenses on this near side someone went to put something in his eye and <laughs> he wasn't happy about it he flinched he's come off towards the near touchline they are waiting now for a free kick to take place now Declan Rice isn't allowed back on for 30 seconds that's one of the new rules the new interpretations, because he's had treatment off the pitch, he's not allowed to come back on for 30 seconds. So there's no point in him moaning. It has to be 30 seconds off before oh! the play. They've given it away. Saliba took it out of the sky, but allowed it to be nabbed by Ayu, who's gone into the area. He's gone down under a challenge from Saliba. Did Saliba get the ball? If he did, it was a perfectly timed tackle. He's quick, Saliba, isn't he? Great recovery. 
He's just thinking he's going to catch him. He's going to catch him. Ayu nicked the ball. Bearing down on goal. And Saliba gets back and puts that right leg out. Oh, it was a mistake. It was. And it invited pressure from Crystal Palace. Ayu just couldn't get away from Saliba. They need a little, a little jolt, Arsenal. Not, not at their best. Might provide it. Partey. On this right side. Plays the ball infield to Ben White. White to Partey once again. Nketiah drops. Looking for the ball. And then spins down the right corridor. It's out wide to Saka. Then into Declan Rice. Who's made some space. Then found Nketiah. Who's in behind the defence. Shifts the goalkeeper and gets it over the top of the bar. Couldn't find the target, Eddie Nketiah. Two good chances, and he hasn't scored, but he's got into two great positions, and Declan Rice breaking from midfield, setting up that opportunity for Eddie Nketiah. It was on the right-hand side for Arsenal. Erdegaard spotting the run of the big number 41, who nudged it down the right channel, where Eddie Nketiah timed his run to perfection. He was onside, and then just lifted the ball over the advancing goalkeeper, and it was just a little bit too high. It just bobbled as he did it. You know what? Just as I was saying, they're not at their best. That was the best move in the game. And the reason it was able to happen is because Declan Rice, late run from deep, and Eze switched off. Great little ball from Declan Rice, outside of his right foot, into Nketiah's pass, should be 1-0. Great run from Declan Rice into the opposition uh, penalty area, which really caused Palace problems. This is causing Arsenal problems. Odson Edouard at the other end, trying to get the ball centrally, but Rice is there to cover. He takes it away to the left-hand side, and then aims to clear. De Kure can't keep hold of it, deflects off him and goes out for a throw-in over on the far side. we played 36 minutes, it's been a good watch, hasn't it, so far? Yeah, it's been a really good watch, and I, I just thought on that chance there, although I saw what he was trying to do and I've had the the um, advantage of looking at a replay where it just sat up as he tried to flick it I just thought the safer one is he had time just to roll it down the side of him on the floor into the corner bit extravagant that the little dink from that close ball thrown down the line by Tommy Yasu it's won by Palace head forward by Rice dekuro has got it back halfway right side Palace in possession then they lose it then they get it back again it goes back to Tommy Yasu who's just inside his own half and then he plays it infield to Saliba just short of the centre circle is Ben White of Arsenal I think he uses the same moisturiser as me played out towards the right side Partey travels infield and then it's back to Saliba and then he nudges it infield to Partey Partey swirls it out wide space for Saka to attack Mitchell now he runs towards the edge of the area cuts back one way then has to shift the ball infield good work by Mitchell to show him inside but there's space now for Erdegaard on the right Saka makes a run in the right channel it's shipped into the box by Erdegaard but headed away by Anderson it was an easy read and then Ben White climbing over the back of uh, Odson Edward heads the ball away then there's a collision between Erdegaard and Edward and we get a stoppage as a result of that and uh, Michael Arteta isn't happy so he has immediately reacted to this by calling all of his players over to the touchline for a little time does out. he ever look happy on the side do you know what I did see him very happy in the <laughs> tunnel after the game after being very agitated after the match against Nottingham Forest he stopped for about five minutes to cuddle a dog he was very happy during that period fair enough he's just having a little cuddle yeah. with a new training yeah. puppy inside the stadium as you do as you do why not and um, it is talk sport that gives me the opportunity to tell you about some of the stuff that's coming up on breakfast tomorrow the former heavyweight world champion boxer david hay and arsenal and england legend david seaman are on the show with ali mccoyst and andy townsend tomorrow morning i saw them both today actually i was in the office having a chat with them a little bit earlier on andy very much enjoying being part of the breakfast show Odegaard just asking his teammates to calm down, waving his arm down, left and right of his central position. Just, just keep your, keep your heads a little bit. It's Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal nil on Talksport with now. And don't forget, with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Crystal Palace versus Arsenal live right now for 11.99. Search now sports. It's a wonderful example, wasn't that, of Declan's little death touch and his ability to spot a pass. <clears throat> Great anticipation, and then can I make the right pass? wins the ball from the right side and heads it down to Decore. He then threads it out, far side, in from Ward to Odson Edward. Havertz trying to win it, strong challenge oh. Odson Edward. I think that he actually, Havertz didn't really do enough there. He's won a free kick, but maybe fortuitously, and now Arsenal racing up the other end of the field, and Palace aren't happy about the it. The ref didn't give it some. 
the linesman gave it on yeah. the far side. Just the referee to call him. Sorry. <laughs> still so I like linesman. Still talking nineties. I like Lino. Yeah. Asso doesn't really work very well, <laughs> yeah, does it? Yeah. Well, actually. <laughs> Careful. Uh, here is Inketia trying to get towards the edge of the penalty here. Plays it out towards the right-hand side. It's picked up by Saka. Erdegaard's peeled away to the edge of the box, but Saka's retained possession. He's tried to trick his way into a shooting position when there were options inside the box. There were four yellow shirts there, and he decided not to lay it off. Just a bit hasty. He's coming into bodies. When you're coming in on your left or right foot or inside on from the left wing like Martinelli against this Palace side, you will always be running into bodies. The two central midfielders of Roy's teams will never be far away when you come inside. The space is behind or through. Just a bit more patience there from Saka. Well, that's nil-nil, and we played 40 minutes. And it's talk sport at Selhurst Park, which has been the home of Crystal Palace for 99 years. They are in the planning stages of rebuilding this main stand that currently holds 5,000 people. They're going to replace it with a state-of-the-art 13,500-seater stand, complete with glass fascia. That will take the best part of three years. It's been dogged with delays up until this point. This stand in particular is caught in a bygone era, isn't it? It has its charm, but no facilities. And the modern forward-thinking football club probably needs a little bit more than that glassy-eyed nostalgia. Here's Saka, edge of the penalty area. And Ketia away. Erdogan picks it up, left footed, drives the ball goal. with back down the centre of the goal. It's tipped over the top by Jeff Johnston and out for another corner. Good effort. Worth a strike, got a bit of space. He should be saving it, really. Straight down the middle, pushes it over the top. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to see because of that uh, rather uh, antiquated uh, <laughs> setup that we've got here. That huge iron post which stands between us and the goal away to our right-hand side. Just a, Luckily, we've got chairs on wheels so we can move either side of it when the ball goes into the penalty area. Uh, ball picked up by uh, Saka. He's going to take the corner kick from this near side and it will be a left-footed delivery from the Arsenal wide man. And it's into that near post again, and it's flicked away by Odson Edward, back in by Martinelli, away by Gurhi, and then picked up on this near side by Bakayo Saka once more. He's fouled by Eze, that's going to be a free kick. And Arsenal have got possession and quickly released Partey down the right side. And there's a bit of space for him to get across in. He gets across in deep to the far post. Martinelli on the volley! Oh, it's narrowly wide of the left hand upright. It was a good move and Partey picked him out. And it was well executed by Martinelli. Just narrowly off target. Well, Saka got the free kick again because he's so strong. Eze couldn't get the ball off him. It's unbelievable, his strength. Then he's up. Quick free kick down the right hand side. Partey this time has advanced past him. Pulls it to the back post. It's a really difficult chance on the volley from the corner of the box for Martinelli. But he has a goal. Goes wide. Good finish to the half, isn't it, from uh, Arsenal? Yep, two minutes to go before the regulation time is up at the end of the first half. And it's uh, Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal nil, live on Talk Sport. And uh, if you... Uh, fancy a little bit of music tomorrow morning when you wake up then uh, why not check out the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on Virgin Radio. You may well have heard Chris this morning talk about his uh, skin cancer diagnosis. Our best wishes go to him. He'll be on Virgin Radio in the morning from 6.30. Here is uh, Declan Rice clipping the ball out towards the far side. It's taken down by Martinelli, a couple of yards in from the touchline. It's played infield to Tomiyasu, and then on to Declan Rice, who sprays the ball out towards this near side. Saka takes it on. Erdogan has gone beyond him, and it's well watched by Jeff Schlupp, who fills in brilliantly from that left-wing position to help Scher out Tariq Mitchell. And it's cleared away by Crystal Palace. Those two banks are for doing their job at the moment. Martinelli out wide. Mitchell intercepts before it can reach Saka. And it comes back infield. And on the halfway line, Odson Edward is trying to craft a Palace attack. We're in the final minute of the first half, and I think uh, there will be a bit of frustration from Arteta that they haven't made the breakthrough, but I think he came here knowing that a Roy Hodgson team was going to be difficult to penetrate. Yeah, well, they've had two good chances, haven't they? Is it the post and Ketty was unlucky? Do the one he should score. But overall, I think Roy will be quite pleased. I mean, he'd want a little bit more going forward, but their discipline's been good. 
mid two midfielders have stifled uh, Modegaard and Havertz to a degree. They've had to give up possession doing that, of course, but overall, I think it'd be reason for He's got to get Eze on the ball a little bit more and keep getting that ball to Ayo because I think he's got the beating of Tommy Asu. Talk Sport on a Monday night, game night. Whenever there's football on a Monday night, it'll be live on Talk Sport. Friday nights as well. We've got Luton against Chelsea for you this week. Bournemouth against Tottenham on Saturday. Around the ground with Adrian Durham. And there will be just two minutes of added time at the end of the first half, which I think Mikel Arteta is a little bit upset about. This game defying convention, as is the uh, normal way. We've had hardly any... Well, it was one card. And we've had... Uh, Two only two minutes of added time. It was a two-minute stoppage just for that head injury, wasn't there? I thought there was two minutes so Beckham gets his contact in. Here is uh, Ben White down the right side into Saka, trying to Great ball. cultivate the ball into Enketia, who spun and turned, but Gerhi did so well to stick to his task and drive him down the right side. It was blocked and goes out towards Erdogan. Back to Saka once again, who rides the challenge of Mitchell, holds him off brilliantly and keeps hold of the ball. Unbelievable. Into Partey. It's almost like he's got a magnet in that boot for the ball, but they've given it away now. And it's gone down in the middle of the park, Erdegaard. And Odson Edouard is steaming forward. He set up Eze inside the penalty area. His shot is blocked by Rice initially. He tangles with Ben White, goes to ground, wants a penalty, and eventually it's cleared away by Tommy Yasu. Upfield towards Enketia. He's trying to deal with Gurhi. Erdegaard's got back to his feet, but it's Crystal Palace who have got the ball and maybe have the last chance of the half. Ball elevated out wide towards Jordan Mayu, who's taken it down in the left wing position now. He's gone on the outside of Thomas Partey, kept hold of it well, just about kept it in, down by the byline. He needs some support. That support arrives in the shape of Mitchell, and then it's a heavy pass by Mitchell, and then Ayu does brilliantly to retain possession for Crystal Palace, bumping Erdogan on the ball. Boy. Strong boy. And then getting it back again, and uh, Arteta just wants them to hold, make sure that they get through to half-time without conceding a chance here. Crystal Palace want to move it forward. The ball's back with Decore. We've played nearly our two minutes of added time at the end of the first half. Decore forward, colliding with Enketia, goes back into the centre circle. Picked up by Jefferson Lerma, switched out towards the far side. There is the half-time whistle. Well, I told you that Arsenal don't like Mondays very much. The best team on the road last season. Struggling to open up Roy Hodgson's reborn Crystal Palace. They've had the best chances. Bukayo Saka has played well in the first 45 minutes. And in Eddie and Ketia, they've had two great chances. One that hit the foot of the post, one that was steered over the top of the crossbar. But they're in a game, Mikel Arteta's team. No doubt about that. Half time, it's Palace nil, Arsenal nil. Arsenal have had nine shots. They're most in the first half of a Premier League away game without scoring since Boxing Day 2019, which ironically was Mikel Arteta's first game in charge against Bournemouth, where they also had nine shots. Crystal Palace have won three of their last 23 home league matches against Arsenal. They drew eight and lost 12 of those, with two of their victories coming in the Premier League only. But they gave quite a good account of the kits themselves in the uh, first half, and it will take a little bit more wit and invention uh, by Arsenal if they want to open up this stubborn Palace backline. We're underway with Palace shooting from left to right towards the Holmesdale Road. And in the second half of the game in those blue and red oh, nice. shirts. And they're coming forward after a back heel from Stubb. A ball through the centre of the six-yard box. It flashes right the way through it. Ramsdale comes out like Superman. It flashes past his gloves and goes out on this near side for a throw. And no one attacked it, Danny. Lovely bit play down the left. Bit of skill from Stubb. He gets Mitchell in. He whizzes it in front of Ramsdale. And I think if Ayo takes a risk there, he taps it in. I mean, it's a bit firm, the cross. But that's the area you want to be putting it in. Getting across your man. Yeah, bit firm. Bit firm. Let's go. Crystal Palace with Sam Johnston in goal. Mitchell, Gurhi, or Gay, uh, Anderson and Ward, the back four. Dukure and Lerma. Eze is the 10. Schlup and Ayu flanking. Odson, Edward in attack. Arsenal with Aramsdow in goal. They're in bright yellow, steward yellow, with wavy black lines circling around their sponsor, which is in blue. Thomas Partey, White, Saliba and Tomiyasu. Erdegaard, 
Havertz and Rice, and then Saka on the right, Martinelli on the left, and Eddie Nketiah had two good chances in the first half. Through the centre, it's still nil-nil. You're listening to Talk Sport. The ball has flown out from the middle of the 18-yard box from the feet of Sam Johnson towards the far side, but very quickly, Arsenal have got it back again, and Saka is coming forward after exchanging passes with Havertz. He's gone down the right side of the area, left foot across into the centre, he's flicked away by Anderson, and Martinelli will allow that to run out of play and away for the first corner of the second half. Yeah, they're, they're, the big problem for Palace second half is going to be able to maintain that concentration, that de defensive discipline to try and stop Arsenal scoring because of Arsenal's possession and the quality, the way, the speed they move the ball. They've got to be on it the whole time and it's a really, really difficult task. Declan Rice has gone into the six-yard box and is uh, making his presence felt at the back post. He's pushing and pulling on Crystal Palace jerseys. The ball comes in right side, a flick on at the near post by Havertz, goes through the penalty area. Out the other side on the right, where Saka retrieves it for Arsenal, the away side, cutting down the right, then back in on his left, then back on the right again, trying to toy with Ayu. A low cross into the box is steered away at the near post by Mitchell, and then Saka tries to win it back again, succeeds, and has it far side the right. And Rice feeds him, he goes to the byline, pushes another cross into the near po post, and it's caught by the goalkeeper, Sam Johnson. I think Sam Johnson should be should be every if he is going to decide to kick and not play out, you've got to kick to Ayu. Fantastic header of the ball. Good aerially, Jordan Ayu, whose last goal was in April against West Ham. He doesn't score too many, but three goals and three assists since Hodgson came back. Wins uh, a lot of fouls as well for uh, Crystal Palace, and he's good at shielding and carrying the ball. They've made a tactical switch, Palace as well. They've they've swapped the position of uh, at the moment anyway, Eze and Schlup. We'll see how that it looks like as they might start on the left where that space was and then Schlup will play behind Edward. So same system, just change the personnel. Let's keep an eye on it. Yeah. Uh, it, we've only played uh, about three minutes of the second half. It's still nil-nil on talks for on game night. Roy Hodgson standing down in front of the technical area wearing his suit and tie. Mikel Arteta, 35 years his junior, wearing a tight pair of grey slacks, shiny black shoes and a black top. He's a little bit more animated inside the uh, technical area, kicking and heading every single ball. It falls to Eze, who moves out towards this right channel. It's cut out by Saliba, and over to the far side it goes. And it's collected by uh, Thomas Partey. Partey runs forward to the halfway line, tucks it infield. And it's played forward by William Saliba, who was superb in the Community Shield, effective last week. And credited with the assist for the Saka goal, though, come on. Uh, ball is uh, with uh, Saka down the right-hand side. He moves into the penalty area. He plays it back to the edge of the box. Erdegaard has to look at his wing mirrors because he's being chased by Schlup. Partey right side, delivers a cross into the area. It's a deep one, but falls to Martinelli. He brings it down with one beautiful touch. Sends it through the six-yard box. Hits the defender. Ward and goes behind and away for a corner. A second of the second half for Arsenal. Yeah, it came from Saka's brilliant running behind again. Mitchell struggling. Lerma chased him down that time. Keeps getting in behind him. Thankless task he's got, Mitchell. Saka looks electric. Constantly moving, wanting the ball as an option. Corners will be taken by Martinelli. It's a right-footed one right under the goalkeeper who punches a big haymaker out to the middle of the Crystal Palace half. Collected by White, then Saka holds off. Haiu <laughs> wriggles away from him, runs forward, then goes down. Free kick has been given. And uh, Jordan Ayew's already had a yellow card. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit careful. Uh, but Saka again showing his strength. That was really good strength from Saka, wasn't it? And tenacious. I don't think. I, I don't think there's any point in trying to knock him off the ball. I think you just wait your time and stay goal side and make him play backwards. That's ball in. quickly in towards Enketi. He tries to go around the goalkeeper who comes out, drags him down, and it's a penalty kick. Ball played quickly, sharply from the set piece, down the right channel. Sam Johnson came careering out. Eddie Nketiah got there first, according to the referee, and the penalty has been given. I think the Lions will give it. Great run from Nketiah again. No, he got there first, there's no doubt. Penalty. Too slow off his line. 
Yeah, I mean, he can plead his innocence all he likes. It's the block on... Um, was he in an offside position and was there a foul on the edge of the penalty area as that free kick was taken? That will be the question that VAR look at. Well, he's onside. It's just whether there's a foul on, I think it's Lerma, although Lerma does make the most of it. I don't think they'll give a foul because they'll probably say he's never going to get there. Well, Bukayo Saka is going to take the penalty. Well, it looks like he's going to take the penalty. You never can tell nowadays. VAR are checking a possible attacking foul in the build-up to Partey this penalty seat. award. Did Partey commit a foul by blocking off the defender on the edge of the penalty area? He did. VAR I just don't think he was going to get there, Sam. It's a brilliant little pass. Is that, is that relevant? If there was a foul, no. is that relevant? That he's he could get be off as well. Do you know what? No, I don't think he's off. He's not off. No, no. he's not, no. Well, there was definite contact, so the foul that is committed on Enketia no, is definitely uh, a penalty. Uh, but was there a foul in the build-up to it? I think David Coote has now realised that's not the case, and the penalty has been given. So, Pakayo Saka has the opportunity from the penalty spot. Um, and there's a, a little bit of a delaying tactics going on here, and then there's a punch of the ball away. We didn't get a yellow card for Sam Johnson for bringing him down for a start, which is a surprise. Bearing in mind the current levels of uh, yellow card, it's going to be Erdegaard. I knew that they were going to change it. Saka had the ball in his hands. I knew they were going to change it. Saka actually took three penalties last season, but missed his last one against West Ham. Did score in the shootout at Wembley. So it falls to Martin Erdegaard, the captain, who got 15 goals last season. He moves back to the edge of the penalty area. And he runs up, arcs his run up, steps up, left-footed, and puts it into the other corner after sending Johnston the wrong way. And Arsenal are in front. It's taken a penalty for them to unlock this stubborn Crystal Palace defence. But they are in front on their travels again. The best team away from home last season are leading at Selhurst Park. It's Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal 1. Nicely put away, but it's all because of the quick thinking of Manchetia making the run in behind for the, for the uh, quick free kick. Didn't get to see who actually played the quick free kick because of the post, but very clever. That's what top players do. Quick free kick, bum, Manchetia makes the run, too late to get there. Keeper comes out, little nudge round him. He's been electric in Ketia, he's been getting in some brilliant positions. He's, Deserves all the credit for that penalty. Well, 1 0 to the Arsenal is the chant from the Arthur Waite stand opposite us over in the far corner. And Martin Erdegaard has his first goal of the season. He was the Arsenal player of the year last season. And uh, at his best, he is a terrific, terrific footballer. But he has. Uh, scored the goal but the plaudits do go to Eddie Nketiah for that brilliant run down the left hand side the right hand side sorry into the channel yeah I think Martinelli as well was a quick free kick I think he was yeah just quick, quickly uh, thinking before everyone else was set Edouard on to learn where edge of the pass oh. as Crystal Palace look to respond it's too wide for Ayu who's fired towards the near post at an almost impossible angle and it goes into the side netting it was a good response just lack of quality in the final third Switched out to the right hand side. Ayu's got to cross that. Maybe he didn't, he miss hit it, but it went into the near post side netting. Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal 1, you're listening to Talk Sport. Mikel Arteta has just sat down in his technical area. And uh, I think he will be uh, relieved, I think, to see Arsenal nudge themselves in front in this game. Ball up towards. Uh, Havertz, who wins a header in the air, it drops for Enketio, travels backwards and then tries to lay it off. It's blocked by uh, Cech Decore. One back by Crystal Palace on halfway. Schlup forward to Odson Edwards, skips past Ben White. And then Saka comes back and puts pressure on him, but the ball has gone wide towards the left-hand side. Lerma's peeled out there. Uh, it's picked up now on the edge of the area by Odson Edward. Here is Lerma in the number 10 position. It's collected by De Coro, trying to fire it through to Eze. It's unlucky. Didn't quite work out because Arsenal had bodies in the way. And they bring the ball clear over on the far side. The right, 56 gone, talks sport. Another great ball forward by Partey. Encouraging De Coro to come forward. Laid off by uh, De Coro. There's a foul inside the D by Saliba on Eze. I think he got lucky there. 
positive response. And it's going to be a free kick right on the edge of the penalty area. Saliba on Eze, it was a ball into his feet from Decorey. Just car stretching and yeah. I think he got, got a bit lucky. Yeah, it was a bit soft that one. Yeah, wasn't it was. It? And, and we know what Eze can do from it. We know what a couple of players can do from this sort of range, but it might well be Eze who takes it. Seven chances created against Sheffield United, eight shots. None of those shots on target, but he played in all 38 Premier League games last season. He was the top scorer with 10 goals and four assists. The only other player to feature in that many games last season for Crystal Palace was Ayu. He has become their new main man. Can he respond just minutes after seeing Crystal Palace concede? He steps back from the free kick, which is dead centre, a yard back from the edge of the D. There's a draft excluder in Erdegaard. Eze strikes it over the top of the bar and a little bit wider the goal as well. It wasn't easy to get it up and down from that sort of range, but he got it up and it wasn't coming down. Yeah, I was looking at, I was look, I'm in line, more or less in line with it, and he... The distance was a bit close and the wall's big, it's got to be perfect. I think you've got to try and be a bit cute there, a bit clever. Maybe go under the wall, maybe move the ball before you take, just have one a yard away, just do something a bit different. Listen, I, I don't want, I do not want yellow cards given for the, the, the slightest little thing. But, I'm looking at this game tonight and I'm thinking that the rules that have been applied over the weekend and the previous weekend are not applying to this one. Correct. The situation here where Ramsdale was going to take the goal kick then decided to give it to yeah. away after waiting for a couple of seconds and then Saliba taking it would have been a yellow yeah. card at another game. Correct. Now if players then get suspended in other, for other football teams late, you know, in the next couple of weeks you can understand why people are going to start getting a little bit irate because there's not consistency across the board. Yeah, but I, I think there's consistency consistency around the fact that every season there is a new initiative that goes well for a couple of weeks and a few games and then then eases on I'm doing it again but that's okay if you do it for two full match days for example <laughs> but if you do it for one and a half yeah, I know and half the saying. teams get away with it and half the teams don't that's not that's not particularly fair is it no Ball cleared away by uh, Aaron Ramsdale. Out towards this near side. It took a flick off to Kura and it goes out for a throw-in in the left wing position. Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal one. You're listening to talk. You know the, you know the thing is with uh, Mikel Arteta when he played? He was much calmer on the pitch than he is as a manager. <laughs> you know, he didn't really want to get involved in a social on the pitch. And, like, if you, you know, never get him smashing into you or verbally giving you anything in your ear. He'd just get on with his game. Much, very different person. Well, we have a yellow card for Takahiro Tomiyasu for taking too long over a throw-in. The second yellow card of the game. Mikel Arteta is not happy about it. He's having a word with the oh, oh. official, Thomas Bramall. Uh, he's taking too long over this throw as well, <laughs> Tommy Asu. And he's now moving down the left touchline, trying to get uh, away from Dukure. Joel Ward knocks him over. It's going to be a throw-in down by the corner flag, away to our left-hand side. Um, if you want him to calm down, just give him a dog. Do you think we're going to get a, a game this season where a player gets two yellows for taking his time on two separate throw-ins? Depends. Depends whether they're deciding to enforce the law True. or not. What day it is. Uh, here is uh, Martinelli. <coughs> Listen, I'm I'm all for supporting the referees and cleaning up the game. I'm all for that. But just be consistent. It's like the handball over the weekend. Just be consistent. Don't give it one week and then not the other week. And then expect everybody to buy into it. Here is uh, Ben White moving up towards halfway. It's into Thomas Partey. And then he takes it uh, towards the right side. He holds onto the ball and then sends it square towards the left and uh, Saliba. And then here's Declan Rice. Palace, not traditionally great starters. The Eagles have won their first Premier League home game just once in 14 previous attempts. Drawing three and losing ten. And they lost here in their opening game of the season last year to Arsenal. And so uh, he's been, it. He, he stood in front of the ball and stopped, stopped him, him from taking it. It was a free kick that was given against uh, Kai Havertz. He stopped Eze from taking it on the opening day of the season. The charity shield is a yellow card. I think we're starting to realise, though, aren't we, about the group of officials we've got at the moment? They're pretty, they're pretty bad. Here they is can't even be consistently bad. Uh, Saka <laughs> up towards uh, 
Martinelli who tries to turn, leaves it for Enketia who darts down towards the left edge of the area. It's collected by Havertz. Havertz turns and plays it wide towards Tomiyasu. Tommy, Tomiyasu onto Enketia. And then it's back in field towards Saliba. Tommy Tomiyasu. Tommy Tomiyasu. <laughs> yeah. And that's his nickname. That's what all his pals call him. Um, down the right is Saka. <laughs> Saka into the penalty area. Trying to trick his way past Mitchell. Sets up Partey. Elevates a shot towards the near post. He's punched into the air. It was a rasper of an effort yeah, from the sure. edge of the box by Partey. And it was well handled by Johnston who concedes the corner. Yeah, Saka's in a heart of everything good they do. Mm, might be catching that. It's not. It, he's hit it well enough, but it's right. It's right down his face. Should be catching that. Did, did you say you'd be catching that? If I was a goalkeeper, I'd be trying to catch that. Yeah, I'd be <laughs> embarrassed not to catch that. But yeah, yeah, no, even me, I'd catch it. Okay. Not the Although I'm not criticising Johnston. I like him. <laughs> Good keeper. Uh, here's the corner in towards the near post. Another flick on at that near post. Aimed towards Inketia. He's beaten to it by Mitchell. He flicks it out towards the far side. Inketia does well to keep it in. Finds Martinelli. Good call by him. Martinelli in towards the near post. Flicked away from the edge of the box by Edward. And then Odegaard's effort from 20 yards is well hit over the top of the crossbar. That near post corner, they keep doing it, Arsenal. I don't even mean to. Not, not waiting for it then. But that's, I mean, I watched them last Saturday against Nottingham Forest and it was a trend. And that's why I mentioned it right at the beginning of the game. They've done it four or five times Yeah, in the first I think time. when you play the near post one, you're trying to get it a bit higher than he is and just get it right in that, right at the near post, but higher. It's just a very hard one. Gary Matt used to have it off to a tee when his Coventry days. He just, remember they had big deal on Dublin and um, someone else used to kill us with it all the time. Was Sean Hartson there at the time? I can't remember. Might have been after that. Uh, ball is on the uh, halfway line and it's with Arsenal who lead by a goal to nil the goal scored by Martin Erdogan after 54 minutes we played nearly 63 now and Declan Rice has the ball here is White back to Saliba Arsenal viewed as a soft touch for many years especially away from home but they had the best record on their travels last season they went some way to struggling that off I think here is uh, White taking the ball up to halfway and then in back infield it goes to uh, Saliba again they play the game at their pace now Arsenal but if you remember rightly last weekend they didn't end up putting Nottingham Forest to bed and then allowed them back into the game and that's always a danger when your lead is so slender <laughs> Tommy Asu support comes from Saliba once again and Arsenal just playing around with the ball on the halfway line not committing too many men forward Rice has breached the press now and picked up the ball and charged forward and he's run down the right side laid it off to Saka Saka faced up by Schlupp comes infield gives it to Erdegaard Erdegaard comes centrally and now Tomiyasu will play it forward on this near side he finds Martinelli Martinelli taking on Ward he back pedalling ward as Martinelli comes up towards him in the left wing position it goes centrally to Tommy Asu and then into Erdogan shut down by Eze who gets there well to cover the ground shut down the spaces and the ball bounces out towards the near side it makes such a difference for a team like Arsenal when you get the first goal you can be really patient in your build up then you don't have to force the issue you see with Manchester City so often go one up in games and then they can just probe and wear you down and Arsenal got very good at that when they've gone up, where, when they've gone up open games Ramsdale under pressure left footed clearance upfield towards uh, Enketia headed away comes out towards this near side it's smashed up by Joel Ward bit of breaking news to bring you Brighton are close to completing the £25 million signing of Lille midfielder Carlos Baleba the Seagulls look to have seen off rival interest from Nottingham Forest that's talk sport sources understanding that and elsewhere Thierry Henry has been appointed as the French under 21 boss the former international will lead Les Bleus for the next European under 21 2025 qualifying campaign and for the Paris 2024 Olympics here on the left hand side the ball is with Martinelli centrally plays the ball towards Enketia turns spins tries to get a shot away it's blocked brilliantly by Mark Gurhey comes back towards Havertz who's Volley is well wide of goal. Yeah, it's a lucky though. I see why he's trying to cut across it with the outside of his left foot. Good play, Martinelli inside with Joe Ward. Bad defending actually. It's a great run in behind, but it gives him too much space. 
ends up falling to Havertz, tries to cut across, it's the right thing to do. Just catches it a bit full. It's currently Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal one of the ladies' odds, you can head to Labrooks where right now you can get Crystal Palace to win at 22 to 1, Arsenal to win at 5 to 1 on, back the draw at 9 to 2. Tommy Yasu oh, has just fouled been, he's Jordan Ayew, and it's a second yellow card for Tommy Yasu, and then a red, and Arsenal are down to 10 men. Two bookable offences for Takahiro Tommy Yasu. The first one was delaying the taking of a throw-in, the second one a foul on Ayu, and it's a sending off for Mikel Arteta's auxiliary left back. The Japanese international has gone, and after losing Yurian Timber in the game last week, they've lost another defender, this time to suspension, and for the rest of this match, he pulled Ayu's shirt back on halfway. There wasn't much in it, just a little tug, but enough to get a yellow card, he's off. Looks a little bit harsh, you know, I'm not sure he did took his shirt. Maybe I've missed it, I'd need to see another replay, but I don't think they're going to change it. Well, they can't because it's two yellow cards so they cannot overturn it well all I can say is if you don't take forever on the throw in you don't have a problem now do you but it didn't it doesn't look like he's pulled him Sam I think I was made the most just gone over with a little bit of touch but I might, I might be wrong on that well well Tommy Astor's not happy he's given the eyes to the uh, ultras behind the goal the Hansdale Road end is revelling in it Airport Albert Albert Sturvenborg is talking to Mikel Arteta about how they're going to solve this conundrum now because they've got quite some time to play with uh, 10 players that's well we saw Liverpool, we saw Liverpool cope really well didn't we when they went down to 10 yes on Saturday and they had to go up a gear and, and they really did what are, Pal what are Palace going to do and how are Arsenal going to react fascinating now for the last what 22 last quarter of the game yeah last quarter of the game and Gabriel I think he's going to get ready to come on here to stiffen their defence at this moment in time Saliba is joined by uh, a quite a deep back five at this moment in time which also includes Kai Havertz and Martinelli um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens next but Palace might have more of the ball something they've been more used to in recent times the ball is out on this right hand side Ward takes it down the right onto Ayu Palace who had more of the ball averaged more of the ball than any other time oh, is that his shirt pulled again by Havertz well if you're going to give a yellow card for what Tommy Yasu did you've got to get a yellow card for that right <laughs> that was a proper pull of the shirt oh yes Sam you should be uh, one of the on the board at a PGMOL I don't get it I know I know I don't get it I don't get how you can how it, it, it can sort of be like that yeah it is inconsistent, yeah, I agree with you. Martinelli is off, and on comes Gabriel to go into the heart of the defence. Eze will take the free kick on the right-hand side. No yellow card for Kai Havertz. Do you know what the key is when you've got one over? You have to up the tempo and press everywhere to make it count. You've got to squeeze the life out of the ten men. Eze with the free kick in towards Ayu, swivels, oh, hits it. Oh, it. It's blocked by Saliba, and it bobbles into the arms of Ramsdale. It was a good cross into the centre and he just peeled off his marker, there was space and he hit it, just sort of helped it on, he didn't really catch it did he? And then it was blocked by Saliba, who just got a cross in front of the front post. That was a good block, yeah, good block from Saliba, but he didn't catch it properly. It's away by Gabriel, up through the middle looking for Nketiah, who's probably going to have a lot of running to do now. Anderson touched it last, it goes out for a throw-in. Mikel Arteta is going absolutely balmy on the near touchline. He's outside of his technical area. Apparently that's okay. There's two, three of them inside the technical area. Been told by the fourth official, Thomas Bramall, to go and sit down. He only allowed one in there. But I suppose Albert Sturbenberg is probably correct when he says there is only one in there because Arteta's outside, he's down the touchline. Here is uh, Decore back towards the right-hand side. It's Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal 1, Arsenal down to 10 players after the sending off of Takahiro Tomiyasu. Good turn by Jefferson Lerma into Eze and then back to, uh, to Kure once again and then it's up through to...
Joel Ward and then out to Ayu. Ayu travels in from the right touchline. He's got some space in the middle. He plays it forward towards uh, the edge of the box. It's away by White and then it's collected by Anderson. He's going to make a change here, Crystal Palace, to try and uh, stiffen up the midfield, give them a little bit more maybe attacking thrust. They're going to bring on Nauru uh, Hamadou. Uh, here on the edge of the area is Eze, out towards the left. And it's uh, collected by uh, Schlupp and then Eze. Eze jinking his way down the left-hand side, tries to take on Rice. He comes inside, then out, then back inside again. Skips oh! past two sides, it's Pate brings him down, surely it's a penalty. Surely it's a penalty. Oh, they're waving the yellow card at him as well. Well, Erdegaard's waved the yellow card at the referee. So did Pate in order to try and get Eze booked. It looked like a, a penalty from where we are. There certainly was seen great to be skill. contact. There was great skill by the slaloming Eze to cut in first pass Rice, then pass no. Partey. Partey says he pulled his leg away. Did he, Danny Murphy? Yeah, I don't think he... Ooh, I think there might be contact. Contact doesn't always mean no, penalty. but it did in the penalty at Liverpool, didn't it? Yeah, but you know, let's uh, and the one at Brentford last week. Let's not talk about consistency. They are reviewing it on VAR because that doesn't look, we're seeing different angles. David Coote is waiting, and now no, he said throwing on. over the far side. He made everybody wait, and then over on the far side, he said uh, it's going to be a throw-in. Well, I agree, it's not a penalty, but. But I've seen two others in the, 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 the week just gone that they've given for the same thing where there's been contact but not enough for them to go down. I think it was Brentford, Tottenham. Yes. And uh, Liverpool, Bournemouth. Jensen, who went down under pressure from Son. Yeah. And Liverpool, Bournemouth was Dominic Schroboslai yeah. in the corner of the penalty area yeah. after the challenge on Saturday afternoon. Uh, Jeff Schlupp is coming off and on comes Ahamada. Played eight times last season, Ahamada, the young Frenchman who signed from Stuttgart last January, was in the Juventus youth system. I think he's going to put Ayu up front with uh, Edouard, which makes sense. Makes absolute sense. But more attacking players on the field, I think makes real sense with Ahamada coming out towards his near side. Ayu going up with uh, Edouard. And Sacking. pushing Schlupp on over on the far side. So they're playing almost like a front four now, aren't they? Well, uh, Mitchell, I think. Or is it Mitchell who went up? No, Schlupp went up. Mitchell's on the left wing. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye on it. See what happens. Mitchell's gone right up, up on the yeah. uh, far side, the left, hasn't he? Yeah. Partey and Saka are now playing wing-backs for, uh, for Arsenal. With uh, Ben White, Saliba and Gabriel three centre halves which is again I think is the right thing to do yeah, Saka's Morrison. come out towards his left hand side isn't he he's playing as a left wing back he right. has done that on several occasions before did that for the England under 17s I think when I saw him play in Chesterfield in the European Championships a few years ago uh, not that long ago actually which is quite uh, amazing really because he's uh, only 21 Four sent back by Jefferson Lerma back into central midfield Crystal Palace with a man extra have 15 minutes to try and find an equaliser and uh, Arsenal well they will know that Roy Hodgson hasn't lost a home game yet since he's been back at the uh, the Selhurst Park one by Erdegaard flicks it round the corner and Ketty has been charged with getting them up the pitch he runs across Lerma who brings him down wins the free kick Lerma says that well, there's nothing wrong with that and the free kick has been given just over the halfway line I think he's done well in Ketia. That's been a good all game, hasn't it? Yeah, he's played the he's played the role well. Stayed up high, made the runs in behind, been a nuisance, been a threat, had his chances. Just what you want from a striker. You know, he hasn't come drifting out wide to look for the ball. He hasn't come deep trying to make you know get lots of touches and be self-indulgent. Havertz back to White. And Arsenal trying to keep hold of the ball for as long as possible now. They don't want to invite pressure from Crystal Palace. They want to keep it as far away from their goal. They know that Crystal Palace will just smell a little bit of blood here. Arteta said this week there will be times this season where they need to bring 
their A game, their mental fortitude will have to come to the fore. They'll have to be physical and strong and repel teams that come at them. They had to see it through in the game against Nottingham Forest on opening day. And they've got to get to the line here against Crystal Palace in order to get two wins from the opening two games. Pass A away, but he just kicks it over the halfway line to take a bit of pressure off and then get Arsenal up to the halfway line, but it's straight back to a Crystal Palace player. I think it's for Palace, they've got to keep risking losing the ball. Don't get don't get lulled in to just keeping the ball for the sake of keeping the ball. Because that you, all you're doing then is just seeing out time. You've got to keep pressing, you've got, I'm going to say pressing, you've got to keep probing. Keep trying to play the ball through the lines. Keep trying to play them over the top, round the sides. Make them defend. You've got to but, push them. You've got to, you've got to try and make something yeah, happen, haven't you? Yeah, what happens a lot of the time, you see teams get so comfortable because they've got the extra man. They just keep the ball moving and circulating and actually don't make chances because they think by keeping the ball they're doing okay. To make chances, you have to take risks, even with the one extra. Here is the Kore. Anderson comes up to help out the attack. He's 10 yards short of the Arsenal penalty area. He sings it towards the penalty spot. Oh. Goes over the head of Ayu and straight through to Mitchell on the other side. And he had to just bound out towards the far side to keep it in. And he just about does that. Goes back in again from that left-hand side. Comes out to Eze and then to Kore. And then back to halfway. And Mark Gay. Back in from Lerma. Chested down into Eze. Dekure takes over. He's got support. Edouard plays it towards the left. Mitchell chips the ball into the box. Good Ed. A hammer to try to charge into the area. There's a collision involving Anderson. It's a free kick. And Ketia says uh, that he was fouled. The referee agrees with him. Danny's not so sure. Looked well, like got the ball. First instinct's normally the right one. Yeah, he got the ball. Well, his foot came up high towards Enketia's chest, which is why the uh, free kick was given, I think. Arteta's making another change. Jorginho is coming on. And uh, who's he going to replace here? Havertz, probably. And Kai Havertz at the moment walking towards the halfway line. The referee is uh, glancing over to see where that substitution is going to take place. The fourth official hasn't even got the board here. Oh, Enketia. And it's Enketia who's coming on. Yeah, Havertz up top. So Havertz is going to lead the line and Jorginho is going to come on in place of Enketia. And uh, I'm a little bit surprised by that. Is that because he can hold the ball up better and Enketia's strength is running in behind? A little bit, yeah. He probably feels he's got more of a physical presence, but I think also it's a simple case of an easier option at times, isn't it? But yeah, it'll be the physicality, but I actually think the get-out ball when you've got 10 is in behind. Well then, if you are sucking the team onto yeah, you... Yeah, I prefer a speed merchant up top when you've got 10 yeah, and a big you've, got, you've got someone who's incredibly rapid in yeah. Eddie and Ketty, haven't you? Yeah. But I suppose they've still got Saka on the pitch as well. Uh, although he's playing a little bit deeper on this left-hand side now as a left wing-back to compensate for the loss of numbers that they've got now. Arsenal. They do lead by goal to nil. But that goal seems a long time ago now since Takahiro Tomiyasu was sent off for two bookable offences. Uh, ball's gone out of play on this near side. Joe Wall's not happy. He's barked at the official on this near side. He's barked then because he's got it completely wrong. <laughs> Apparently that's okay as well though now. You can bark at them. Yeah, I mean the rules have gone out the window for oh, the, right, the officials tonight. Totally gone out the window. Absolutely. You can do the fake cards. And you can kick the ball away, you can change the throw in taker, you can have a go at the officials, no problem. Today, the new rules have been rested. Yeah, apart from... The apart throw, from if you're... Uh, apart from the one <laughs> he did actually <laughs> yell a card him. Uh, here is Gabriel, back to halfway. Saliba. And again, let me reiterate, I'm not one for wanting everybody sent off and yellow card no, every five me, minutes. But what I want is the law to be applied evenly across the whole of the league not just here and there yeah I hear you it is frustrating here is uh, Gerhi back to Anderson up towards the halfway line you're listening to Talk Sport out towards the wide left it goes Eze then into Jefferson Lerma Lerma wide of the centre circle it's across to uh, Anderson Anderson tries to play the ball infield and then it's picked up by Gay once again. Out wide it goes into Eze. Eze 
across to Gay. And again, you've got to have some purpose with this possession. You can't just keep playing it in front of the centre circle and hoping that something's going to happen for you. They're 1-0 down here, Crystal Palace. They need to find a way past this Arsenal defence. An Arsenal defence which is flexed into a five now because they're uh, trying to retreat as Odson Edward tries to look for a way through. Can't do so. Partey finds Havertz. Havertz holds onto the ball well. And now Rice springs nice. forward over the halfway line, touches it to his left. And Saka goes charging down the left-hand side. 81 minutes on the clock, Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal 1. Jorginho, who's come on to uh, stiffen up that midfield and to keep hold of the possession, gives it to Rice, who then almost gives it away. He pulls back uh, a Hamader, and then as the ball's played forward towards Gabriel, there's a foul by uh, Jordan Ayew. <laughs> It's a free kick just oh. in from the touchline. Yeah, that looked a bit soft as well. I think I don't know who's having the worst day. Uh, Crystal Palace nil, Arsenal nil, on talks forward now. Don't forget with now you can stream all of the Sky Sports action like Crystal Palace versus Arsenal live right now for 11 99 No contract search now. Sports. Here is Ayu down the right side into Ahamada. Ahamada moves up to the edge of the penalty area and then uh, lays it back to uh, Dekure. A little bit of frustration creeping in amongst the Crystal Palace support. It's driven up towards... Uh, you don't, you don't want your right back, Joe Ward, in the, taking it into his feet on the edge of the box, trying to make things happen. Well, they've cleared it away, Ben White, high into the air, but it's gone miles away. It takes a really confident footballer, a brave footballer, to keep trying to make things happen when you know the crowd are getting a bit frustrated. Just keep probing, keep trying, take the risk, take the risk. Little balls in behind, little balls into feet, little one-twos. You've got to keep trying to make things happen. You can't just keep circulating the ball. Uh, the ball's out of play over on the far side. They want to make a change. Joel Ward yeah. is coming off. The right decision. And on comes... Young Jessarud Raksaki. The winger signed from Chelsea's youth system was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant on loan at Charlton last season. He was the top scorer, player's player of the year. Player of the year. And a great end to the League One season at the Valley. An exciting player, Raksaki. And uh, he's gone on to try and make a difference wearing the number 49 shirt. He's playing on the right-hand side as the ball comes into the penalty area. He looks oh. to attack this cross. It's away by Gabriel. Back in towards the edge of the penalty area. It's headed away by uh, Declan Rice and out towards the far side. And Erdegaard trying to get his team further up the pitch. Rice ain't happy out on this playing service down in front of us. As we approach the 84th minute of the game. Bristol Palace nil Arsenal 1. There might be a nervy few minutes for Mikel Arteta for the second week in a row. Hanging on against Nottingham Forest. Hanging on against Palace. Although Palace haven't had a chance really now since they've gone uh, a man up. A ball out towards the left-hand side. Mitchell on to Eze. Inside the penalty area. It goes back to Eze. And then from Mitchell, he tries to get round Partey. Good tackle out for a corner. They've done it well. They've managed it well. Quick change to five at the back. Right decision. Keeping your shape. Dropping deep. Don't mind that at all. People call it negative. But you've got a one nil lead. You keep everyone behind the ball. You do this in training all the time. Very hard to score again. Nicholas Jover, the set-piece coach, has come out to the edge of the penalty area for Arsenal to try and direct the traffic inside the boxes. It's headed away by Ben White. Bounces on the edge of the penalty area. Arsenal trying to get it clear. Rice manages to nudge it out of the box, but it's with uh, Ahamada into Odson Edouard, who twists away from the defender Saliba, then gets the return ball, tries to take on Gabriel, gets just something on it, puts it clear, comes out to Saka, who's in the left wing position, he does brilliantly to get it away, but there's no out ball, and Anderson's got it back, and he's pinpoint with his delivery, he wraps it into Raksaki, it comes to the edge of the box, and Eze, Erdogan is there to block it, Partey gets back into a right fullback position, and then he takes it to the touchline and clears upfield, and hefts it away towards halfway. Still five minutes of normal time to hang on for Arsenal. They look comfortable at the moment. Got good shape, good line. Lots of bodies in there. Ball into the box and Raksaki gets up there. Tries to get on the end of the header, but I think it might have been Edward who was, was closest Edward, yeah. to it. And he tried to flick it on just before that. And he didn't get a proper touch on it. It was a little bit behind him, Sam. Good ball in from the left. From Mitchell. It's a bit low and a bit behind him, and he can't stoop backwards just in front. That's what they've got to do, though. Ball wide, crosses in. Ball wide, crosses in. Ball's just keep putting the balls in there. Jakob Kivior and Alok 
Sinchenko about to come on for uh, Arsenal and uh, Mikel Arteta has just sort of had to wrestle with uh, Oleg Zinchenko down on the touchline as the instructions are being put to him there's a few people inside that uh, little technical space once again trying to influence proceedings all three of the uh, men for Crystal Palace Paddy McCarthy Ray Lewington Roy Hodgson all trying to get instructions onto the field of play we're running out of time as far as Crystal Palace are concerned there's only three minutes and a bit to go and it's 1-0 to Arsenal no. and they've just kept the ball a lot on the edge of the penalty area now shifting it, it around in. it needs to go in from the wide area and the problem is, is it hasn't gone in often enough and it's just been Arsenal keeping them at arm's bay since they went down to 10 players after the sending off of Takihiro Tomiyasu it's uh, on to Ahamada Ben Ayu holding off two defenders plays it wide Raksaki jumps in field left footed drive hits Gabriel comes to Ayu edge of the penalty area Havertz tries to get it clear it's well won in midfield uh, by Jefferson Lerma and it's one back towards the right hand side by Anderson who sprays it to the left chested down by Tyreek Mitchell takes on Partey Partey trying to push him further wide he gets it through his legs finds Ayu inside the area down by the byline just tries to nudge it into the six yard box and it's cleared away by Arsenal's defence who are hanging on better from Palace crosses in balls into feet little bit of intricacy Dekure into the final two and a half minutes on TalkSport on game night with Now Sports. Don't forget, with Now, you can stream all the Sky Sports action for just 11 99 with no contract. Search Now Sports. Ball out wide. Picked up by Ahamada. His Good left ball. footed cross is a decent one towards Edouard. It drops inside the box. There's a tangle between Raksaki and uh, Gabriel. The referee says play on. Arsenal really deep. Most players inside their 18 yard box. The ball goes in towards Ayu. Headed away by Saliba who took charge Arsenal having to stretch every sinew to stay in this game at 1-0 the ball on the left hand side can they find an equaliser Crystal Palace the ball sent centrally to Anderson they've got to maintain their lead Arsenal if they want to go level with Manchester City and Brighton on maximum points it's Saka on this near side who gets felled by uh, Ahamada and it's going to be a free kick in the left fullback position here come the changes silly 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 Sackle's going nowhere there. Didn't need to foul. Bit of naivety from the young lad. Uh, off comes, uh, I think it's Havertz who's coming off. And the other change is going to be Martin Erdegaard, who hands the captain's armband to uh, Jorginho. Uh, Jorginho, oh no. Uh, yeah, it's Sacco who's going to come off for uh, Zinchenko. And Kivior is coming on for Erdegaard. Havertz is going to stay on. He's just come over towards the near touchline to have a word with Mikel Arteta. Everybody's slapping hands. The problem is they've had a couple of good balls into the box and they've just gone over the head of Ayu or just gone over the head of uh, uh, Odson Edward. Maybe they needed that Croydon giraffe in there to nod it home. <laughs> they just haven't been precise enough with the delivery, have No, they? They, they've lacked a tiny little bit of quality in the final third, but since the um, sending off, Arsenal have made a point of just defending in numbers and stopping them making chances and they've done it really really well good game management good decision from the manager and well uh, well done to the players for carrying it out still time yet uh, ball is on the right with Ben White of Arsenal he's high up inside opposition territory he was felled by uh, Tyreek Mitchell the referee says play on Partey in field Jorginho Havertz back to goal 10 yards centrally away from the penalty area goes wide to Oleg Zinchenko Zinchenko will keep possession here give it to Rice Jorginho and then back to halfway in field to Zinchenko then out to Rice and then back to Partey and then forward by Jorginho it's good football by Arsenal this keeping possession taking the pressure off and dragging themselves up the field of play and then Havertz has been played in by Zinchenko he just couldn't get away down that left channel because the ball from Zinchenko wasn't perfect it's good to see him back though from his calf injury clearance away from deep inside their own territory and uh, I didn't see how many that was at seven minutes of added time at the end of the first half there was a couple of posts between me and the fourth official there here is uh, Ben White over on the far side the Arsenal right Talk sport on a Monday night. The sports bar incoming. 03717 22 
half stop been down to 10 players since Takahiro Tomiyasu was sent off in the 67th minute, the same time that Naifa Gerd was given his marching orders on Sunday at the London Stadium. And he too got a second yellow card. <coughs> Foul on uh, Kai Havertz, generates a free kick. I think that might be another yellow card, is it? Yep. This one coming for uh, Ducouré. They've huffed and puffed, haven't they, a little bit since the uh, sending off Palace. Well, one of the things that I think was the highlight of last week, right, they, they created so many chances. They had lots and lots of shots. I think I mentioned it earlier on, they had 24 shots uh, in that game against uh, Sheffield uh, United. But they scored one goal. As they had seven shots, but he, he had none on target. That's their problem, isn't it? That they don't score enough goals. Yeah, I, I think against this Arsenal side, it's, it's more understandable because they haven't had the ball as much. But I think what, what will disappoint them is the 22, 23 minutes they've had and longer without with the extra man is that they haven't they haven't really created a, a, a proper quality opportunity, which you should be really when you've had you've had an extra man for that long. And it's not a stat that's just uh, from this season, though. Going no. back last season, you know, out of that uh, brilliant run, they still didn't score anywhere near as many goals in those 11 games at the end of last season with Roy Hodgson in charge as the other teams that ended up putting the points that they put on during that period. Here's Jefferson Lerma for Crystal Palace. And we've still got a few minutes of added time. Four and a half of them still to play. It's 1-0 to Arsenal, who've got one fewer men on no. the field but they're going sideways and backwards rather than forwards and purposeful Crystal Palace and that lacks penetration Eze into the box and it's going to elude everyone good ball it's good ball it's do you know what really you should have everyone flying in on that ball there should be more urgency when you 1-0 down when you've got an extra man I don't think there's too many coaches these days who probably do that much work on it. And I think they're going to have to. You're going to get a lot of games this season with people playing at 11 against 10. Yeah, Havertz has just nudged uh, Anderson off the ball. Then he's kicked the ball away. And that's a yellow card for Kai Havertz. And maybe it's a good job that the referee kept his cards in his pocket beforehand. Yeah. It might have been down to nine aside by now. Lerma. Oh, back to uh, Gurhi. It was a little bit wayward. 93 minutes 30 seconds on the clock and we're ticking time away here Palace are going to be defeated at home for the first time since Roy Hodgson rejoined the club Raksaki tries to play it round the corner for Ayu Ayu trying to get on the end of it and he bounces into uh, Gabriel and then that goes behind for a goal kick and there's high fives and fist pumps and celebrations for Arsenal as they look to run the clock down but also because they know that they're getting closer, inching closer and closer. Do you know what, we used to uh, we used to give ourselves high fives and slaps on the back, we'd won a big derby game or something. Not, now not, you're doing it for getting a, for getting a goal kick. <laughs> it's a different world now mate. Oh my good God. Listen, you've got to celebrate the small wins. Danny's just, rocked, gone mad. Danny's just rocked back in his chair. He's wiped the sweat from his brow. He's closed his eyes. He can't quite believe what he's witnessing here. Rice helps the ball high into the night sky. Drops at the feet of Anderson. Not the best of clearances. The cross comes Lerma and gets it back. No, go his long. goalkeeper. And he goes short, throws it, bowls it out into the path of Gurhi. We're in the final few seconds of the game here. The ball is wide out on the left-hand side. 94 minutes and 30 seconds play. It's collected by Eze. Infield it goes. It's lifted into the box. Aimed towards Raksaki. Heads it back across into the six-yard area. Away by Gabriel. Drops inside the six-yard box for her. Edouard. Out comes the goalkeeper. Oh. It's fired over the top by Mitchell. That's the chance. At a 45-degree angle. About three yards back from the angle of the six-yard box. It fell to Tyreek Mitchell. Ramsdale had come flying out. Hadn't quite taken command. And the ball went into the Holmesdale Road end of the ground. Do you see what you get, though, if you put the ball in the box with enough bodies in there? Chaos. Yeah, chaos. Instead of side to side to side, go long, get second balls. Make it difficult. Make them defend. He's just got to key that down. It was a tired... It come out to the left-hand corner of the box. Mitchell just slashed out a little bit. 
Well, Mikel Arteta does not look entirely happy. He'll be delighted if they get this over the line. But he and will be probably satisfied. deserve to, to be honest, Sam. Yeah, well, I don't think Palace have done enough. And I think that's probably uh, something that Roy Hodgson might rue a little bit later on as Surrey Mitchell goes down the left-hand side, gets the ball into the box, it's away by Saliba and dug out, and they're defending well here. Ball out over on the far side, thrown into Eze, it's nudged back towards that far side where it's picked up by Mitchell, Gay infield to uh, Ahamada, and that invited uh, Rice to come across and close it down because it was a heavy touch by Ahamada, who's got it back again centrally. Mikel Arteta just keeping Rice in his slot, saying stay back, block up the channels. The ball goes down the right for Crystal Palace. Maybe one last attack. We're in the 96th minute here. The ball is on the right side. It's collected by Raksaki. Decent cross in towards the edge of the six-yard area. And Ramsdale comes out, pats it to the floor, gets on it, and they all go over and pat him on the head and give him a big cuddle and say, well done, Aaron for using your hands not enough pace on the cross he's got it on his left foot Raksaki and just couldn't quite get it out of his feet to get enough pace on it there's the 97 minutes that we've had and there is the full time whistle and Arsenal celebrate a victory a hard fought victory and now Mikel Arteta's team even like Mondays the Kings of London win another derby and another away game. They built their title challenge on Derby Day wins and victories away from home last season. And that consistency on the road has started again this campaign. They weren't perfect last week. They weren't perfect this week. They had to dig in with 10 players for the final 23 minutes of the game after Takahiro Tomiyasu was sent off for two bookable offences. The second one certainly maybe more debatable than the first but they got the job done and they joined Brighton and City on six points and leave Palace with their first defeat at home of Roy Hodgson's second spell in truth Palace didn't create enough once Arsenal went down to 10 men and as a result it finishes Crystal Palace nil Arsenal won